that's fine. You just want to make number one, make sure that you're starting at a point where it's clear. So glasses are good, they, they're going to give clear vision. Right? And number two, you want to make sure you're within the range of the glasses. If you go beyond that, then the frame is going to give you a false positive. Right? Okay. Were there any other questions that came up while you are doing the other tests? Yep. If you like doing your thing a long time while you're doing it, can you start like fatigue the muscles and get the case? You can, yeah. Okay. Um, some people get get eye fatigue for sure, especially with the convergence divergence. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing to look at is eccentric gaze holding, um, and the idea is you're looking to see if the patient has an astagmus in room light. Okay. So the idea is, and this is something, like I said, we'll talk about a lot more in the next lecture when we talk about central science. But if you have a, a person who, when fixating on a target, they suddenly get an astagmus, it's another, it's another central sign. So what we're doing here is just screening for that. We're going to see if when they fixate on something, they start, their eyes start to shake in that way that we know an astagmus to be. Okay. Once again, it's important to start at a point of clear vision, because if it's blurry, their eye is, is going to shake trying to find the image. So is this pen clear to you right there? Mm -hmm. Good. So what I want you to do is follow the pen wherever it goes. And so to start, I'm just looking, with that, sorry, without moving my pen at all, I'm just looking to see by fixating, is there an astagmus happening? And I don't see anything. Then I bring them to the end range. And so this, this is where the um, range of motion comes into play. You just want to bring him to the end of his range of motion that you established. So I bring him to the end, and now once again I'm watching for an nystagmus. It's normal to have a few beats of nystagmus right when you bring the person to that point. So one, someone here had that, you had that, right? Um, when they were checking for ocular range of motion, they, um, she noticed, perceptively, a nystagmus at the end. That's normal. A few beats of nystagmus is normal. But as you're holding it, that nystagmus, there shouldn't be any more beats of it. Okay. So right now, I don't see any other eye motion happening when I hold it here. So let me summarize. Is that pen clear to you? Good. Just follow it wherever it goes. I'm observing for nystagmus here. I'm observing for nystagmus at end range. Why am I stabilizing his head? What will happen if you move his head? Not in range. Say it again? Not in range. It's not in range, but what else? His VOR Yep, his VOR will kick So if he starts to move his head, it's going to give you a false positive for his head. Okay. Good. So you have side to side. So in other words, check east. It's called eccentric gaze holding. Okay. Next part is saccades. So this time what I want you to do is when I say nose, look at the tip of my nose. When I say pen, look at the tip of my pen. about shoulder width for myself, or less. And the idea is, I'm watching his ability to refixate on another target. So these are saccades, right? How fast should you do it? Saccades are, oh, my instructions, or instructions you want to be relatively slow. You don't want them to be self-paced. There's different parts of the brain that are responsible for self-paced self saccades versus reflexive saccades. So we want more reflexive saccades. In other words, you just want to say it slowly so that he's obeying your commands rather than, um, rather than just going back and forth. Okay? Because you need to look for a few things. Um, 
You're looking for accuracy, and you're looking for speed. So I want his eyes, and I, nose, and nose, and nose. He should be able to fixate accurately and not overshoot or undershoot. Technically, saccades are in, in all directions, but um, the official way to test it is directly horizontal. So if I were to take a, you know, you're assessing it equal to my nose, but if I were to extrapolate that, it would be horizontal to his eye. You see that? And when you do the first test, you were going to get to his nose or to his eyes? Like the, the convergence? Yeah. Convergence is going um, just below his eyes. So if I were to bring it all the way in, you would not have to look at it. It's about there. Slightly below. Um, with, so with saccades, you're looking for overshooting or undershooting. I'll show you what that looks like um, with the video. But the idea is if, if the eye goes past the target, then back to it, it's hypermetric saccades or overshooting. Either term is fine. Another positive, I'll get to you in a moment, another positive is undershooting. So if he goes halfway there and then goes on target, that would also be a positive sign. Okay. The other thing that makes it positive is if it's too slow. So saccades can go up to 400 degrees per second. They're incredibly fast. So if you see someone's eye just going slightly over there to the side and just making its way over to your, your pen, then that's considered a slow sit Okay. You had a question? Uh, yeah, just double check. Do you do that in all four directions as well? Yes, I do it in all four. So we'll go to the left side, to the right side. Um, I just go up. I don't go down because they'll lay behind the card as well. Some people have only positive, positive signs for saccades in one direction only, which is why we check all the different directions. So what is positive with this mean? What should we do? Red flag. Any other questions with that? Next is a head thrust. So what I want you to do this time is I'm going to take your head. First you screen them, screen their neck to make sure there's no neck pathology, no limited range of motion, and no contraindications. Uh, do you have any neck pain? Do you have any problems with your neck? Okay. Um, then you explain to the patient what's going to happen because it's not necessarily comfortable. So the idea is, I'm going to take your head, I'm going to turn it back and forth slowly, and then I'm going to throw a couple quick head motions in there. The idea is, um, when I move your head, it's not going to be anything this far. I'm not going to be cracking your neck or moving it a high amplitude. But the idea is I'm just going to move it slightly to the side. Is that something you're okay with? Okay. So if you explain it to something like that, patients are actually pretty comfortable doing that. So the other instruction you want to tell them is to look at your nose. So let's, let's just go for it. I'm going to tilt your head forward. I want you to keep your eyes fixed on my nose, the tip of my nose. Is that nose clear to you? Okay. So try to relax your, your head and keep looking at my nose. And so first, and this is, I'm talking to everyone else here, first I'm slowly turning his head, oscillating it side to side. Okay. I'm just looking at, I'm just kind of making it comfortable for the person. Um, initially, okay? So I'm going side to side. And then I'm going to throw a couple quick head motions in there. See that? Let me try it again. See that? So what are we looking at here? What are we assessing? 
be able to view it. You are, yep. Because at a fast, we call a head thrust, a fast head motion, the only visual perception mechanism that's maintaining visual stability is the VOR. Right? So this is a great way to assess that. If it's positive, it's not a central sign. Remember, because we're looking at the VOR. There are central problems that can cause problems here, but if this is positive, you're not immediately calling the physician and telling them you have a positive okay. You would see this diagnosis if it's positive. Oh, so thank you for bringing that up. What you'll see positive is a refixation saccade. Because what happens is, remember we talked about the gain of the VOR? I'll let you guys write for a moment, uh, and then I'll explain it. So the gain of the VOR is a one-to-one. -one. If the gain is 1.0, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, right? So if I turn the head 10 degrees to the right, the eye should go 10 degrees to the left, right? To maintain visual stability. If that's slightly off, let's say I turn my head to the right, my eyes only go five degrees to the left, the brain then needs to refixate on the point it meant to stay on, and that's called a refixation saccade. So if I turn his head quickly to one side and his VOR is slightly off, there's a low gain, his eye only goes part of the way and then needs to refixate on the point. So a positive test for a head thrust is the refixation saccade. And so we're looking at the VOR. The other thing you want to do while you're doing this is you want to make it random. You don't want to, you don't want them to anticipate it too much. Number one, they'll probably clench their, clench their neck up and prevent the head thrust from happening. Or number two, it, it'll just be too predictable for them. So I usually, um, you could look at the tip of my nose again. You can tilt your head forward. So I usually oscillate indefinitely. They don't know when it's going to happen. And I'm not necessarily going to alternate left and right. I may go right twice, and I may go left twice. And I'm not going to just alternate left, right, left, right. As you head. Okay. <laughs> so we'll give them a break. Um, and why don't you guys break off and practice those.